Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Tapestry, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules, Goose, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to the ancient world, everybody, where each player controls a uh, struggling startup society. And over the course of five eras, we are going to explore this world and expand our dominion across the world. And along the way, we'll also develop new technology and new breakthroughs in science. And I've mostly got the game set up. I'm going to be the yellow player. I am starting out over here in this neck of the woods. You can tell this is the... Uh, cradle of my civilization because there are two of my nice little towers here. And I'm going up against the blue player over on the other side of the world. And today, I'm going to be playing solo. So the blue player is actually going to be controlled by this deck of cards. They, uh, the Otama is capable of traveling all over the world and doing pretty much everything I can do, and they'll put up a pretty good fight. In fact, it's interesting, the game comes with a few different ways that you can adjust difficulty. I'm on the normal difficulty, but I could go to the hard difficulty. And I can, I'm can. i also on level 2 of their uh, payment phase but I could make it easier going to level 1, or I could go to level 3 or level 4. So, I'm just kind of going with the standard introduction, wish me luck, uh, because even still, this guy is a challenge to beat. And, even though I'm playing solo, you should get a pretty good idea of what a multiplayer game feels like, because he does pretty much everything a uh, human player would do. Okay, so... How does it work? Well, we need to do a little bit more setup uh, before we can get going. Specifically, what I've set up so far is, here's my neck of the woods, I am the yellow player, I've got all these buildings waiting to be built in my capital over here. And by the way, I should say, we're starting out in the wetlands, uh, which means we've got this particular layout to build our capital up. Uh, this is a place where we uh, put these income buildings, and as we generate these income buildings and build them, we increase the amount of income we get at the beginning of every era. So one other important element uh, that was part of setup is that my society, my civilization, is a bunch of entertainers. This is who we are and what we do. And this means every time we move into a new era, except for the very first one at the beginning of the game when we're still basically cave people, we're still in the Stone Age, uh, most of the time as we advance our society forward, I get to engage in this little mini game where I have to make choices about how I'm going to advance to get extra bonuses as we go along. Now, I chose the uh, entertainers because they're one of the simpler um, societies that you can be. Uh, you know, it's a pretty straightforward thing. But this game comes with tons, tons and tons and tons of different societies, different civilizations you can develop, whether you're alchemists or futurists or inventors or militants or mystics. I mean, there's just tons of them. And these all have radically different functions that really give you a very different feeling game depending on who you are. Often, they will uh, kind of push you in a direction. If I were a militant civilization, you better believe I'd be focusing a lot on military. But the nice thing about the entertainers is they're kind of wide open. They don't really necessarily prescribe one particular strategy. So, the world is my oyster as we try to entertain the people of this world. All right, so we are ready to go. Me versus the Otama. And there's actually two characters, the blue and the gray character I'm playing against and uh, in, the, in the solo game. And the first thing that happens on your turn is you either choose to do income or advancement. Now, most of the time, uh, the vast majority of turns are going to be advancement turns. That means you are exploring or doing military actions or science or inventions and breakthroughs. But the very, very first turn of the game, every player must do income. This is always the same because, I mean, at the beginning of the game, we have nothing! I've got no culture, no money, no food, no population. So, the first thing everybody does is gets a little income. And the way that works is uh, the income phase is actually listed as a reminder for everybody on their boards. I know it's really zoomed out, so let's go on ahead and zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. Uh, this is what an income turn is. First, we activate the special power of our civilization. In my case, it's entertainment. Then we play a tapestry card that helps tell the story of our civilization. Then we can upgrade technology and score points. And then finally, we get the actual income of our income turn. Now, you may notice there's 
tiny little numbers next to each of these steps, that indicates which income turn we will actually do those individual steps. Because over the course of the game, we will play through five eras. We will advance. We will do an income five times. The very first one, which we're about to do, uh, we skip this because you know there's no little number one in the second, third, fourth, and fifth income turn. We will activate our special society power in the second, third, and fourth. We'll play a tapestry card in the second, third, fourth, and fifth. We'll get um, points and upgrades, and in the first, second, third, and fourth, and we're in the first income phase right now. We'll get income. So basically, that means the first turn for everybody in the game is just to get some basic income. And how does that work? Well, it has to do with all of these income buildings up here. Remember, um, I've got all of these spaces covered by all these buildings I've yet to build. So only this space, this space, this space, and this space are exposed. And that means those are the income I'll get. Specifically, I'll do some bartering, which will give me some money. I will um, exercise our symbology, which gives me some population. And then we'll do some hunting to give us some food and a ceremony to get us some culture. Also, in addition to the food and the culture, we will get one tapestry card and one exploration tile based on our hunting and ceremony. This Everybody could do this pretty much at the same time because the first round... It's really an extended part of setup. Um, that We've set up everything else. We've got our boards and we've, we've picked our starting locations and all that. And we now get our income, which means the first, everybody starts with an income of one for each of these things. So now I've got one of each of the four resources. I get one explore tile. And let's see, it is a mountainous forested region. Okay. And this is public knowledge face up. And I get one tapestry card. And let's see, it is uh, a techn uh, uh, technocracy, uh, technocracy, a technocracy. So, before I go any farther, I'm glad this one came up because it's an important thing to understand. Um, unlike a lot of civilization games that stack the deck so that early inventions come uh, in real human history come early and later inventions come later, that's not the case in this game. Um, I've got something that sounds like, oh, well, this is really from the future. This is probably in the uh, 21st century. Uh-uh. If I play this early in the game, it means the story, the tapestry of history that my civilization goes through means... We were early, um, you know, uh, Bronze Age uh, technocrats, or the Bronze Age equivalent of a technocrat. I mean, the uh, ability I'll get when I play this later on uh, it could be universal at any point in the game. It doesn't mean we'll have glasses and wear uh, lab coats and all that. You have to use your imagination to say, well, what would a technocrat be in the era of antiquity? Because if I play this card early, I'll be an, an ancient technocratic civilization. All righty. So, I've got this. This is something I may or may not play later. I've got this. This is someplace I may or may not explore later. And I've got one of each resource. Now, the dummy player, he goes through his income phase as well. And for him, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, this doesn't happen until uh, a payment two, payment two, payment two, payment two, payment two, or income. Income one. Okay, he gets a tech uh, or a tapestry card of his own. I don't get to know what it is. It is a secret. Uh, like it would be with the regular players. And he... Uh, right, that's it. That, that's all he'll do. But when he does his second income phase, which thematically means he's moving into a new era of development, because we'll play through five years of the game, then he'll get to do all these other steps. In much the same way that I'll get to do all of my steps also. And the tougher he gets, the more steps he has available to him. Since I'm playing kind of medium difficulty, there's two steps he just doesn't do at all. Ever in the game. Right. So, that was the first turn. Everybody did an income phase. Now, we can go on to the second turn, where I could do income again. I could do it right now, but that would be very foolish, because all it means is, well, I, um, well, I haven't built any buildings, so I wouldn't get any more income than I've already got. I should use some of these resources to do advancements, and that's where the heart of the game is. So, as you can see, I uh, pick one of the four advancement tracks, I pay the cost to move forward on it, and I do what it says. Uh, it's super simple. It could not be simpler. It's barely an inconvenience um, as we move forward. So, I've got to decide now if, uh, since I'm not going to do income, am I going to explore? Am I going to do science? Am I going to do technology? Or am I going to do military? I pick one of those four, and then I've got to pay the resources to do it. So I haven't even looked at this yet. What does this mean? When played, if I'm the first player to enter this era... 
uh, get a technology card and upgrade it for free. Wow. If you're not the first player, get three points for every opponent in the game. And there are two points. So this is six points if I let them go first. So, th um, because this is in my future. Right now, we are makers of fire. Our first uh, era of the game is we've just discovered fire. Um, we haven't even you know gotten into... We, we're, we're the early days of man. If I play this during my second... Uh, income phase, that's when this will come into effect. And I'll either score some points or I'll get a free tech upgrade. As much as I would like those points, I would like a free tech upgrade more. So that means, well, this is interesting. Nor I said up front, normally I don't have a reason to do another income phase immediately, but I could do an income phase immediately to get that. But, you know, I want to get some stuff done before we go into income. So um, that means it kind of points me in a direction. Um, if I'm all about tech, let's say my first move is going to be technology-based. If this is going to be what I'm all about. Now, I should say, by the way, um, as part of setup, my two opponents, the blue opponent and the gray opponent, they, as part of a random element, chose their favorite tracks to advance on. Blue really likes science. Gray really likes technology. And that means they are more likely to advance on those tracks than the other tracks, which means by me making a move here, I'm competing with Gray because Gray is probably going to move up here as well. And the first player to reach certain milestones along uh, this track gets huge benefits. What are those benefits? Well, they are cool, awesome looking buildings that we get to add to our capital over here that can give us more victory points, and uh, more resources to be able to push forward. These are really, really cool. These are the main ones we get whenever we hit this space, this space, this space, this space, etc. Although it's only the first player to come here would get the forge. Only the first player to reach this level of exploration would get the uh, the, the lighthouse. So, um, if I'm going to take off on tech, I've got to do it knowing I'll probably be racing gray because this is his favorite as well. But I'm going to do it anyway because I would like to get some tech. Although, not, that's the thing. I don't have to. I'm going to get tech for free if I play this right. So, maybe I shouldn't ch race after him because he might beat me. Um, right now, neither of them have shown interest in exploration or the military. And, you know, oh, man. Yeah, okay, I was going to do tech, but I don't want to race him. Plus, I'm going to get tech for free when I become a technocrat. So, I'm going to do some exploration instead. This is my first chosen action. Now, whenever you do an action, you have to pay the cost, which is always shown here above the area. You can see the first three explore actions cost any one good. So it costs another good, another good. Now, if I want to get to level four of exploration, it costs a food and a good, and then so on. Then it costs a food and two goods, and then finally, for the last steps, where we're building the space shuttle, interstellar travel, and warp gates, it requires two food for all of those. But right now, we're in the early days. I'm just going to develop scouting. I have to spend one resource. I could spend any of them. And in the early game, all resources are created equal. It doesn't. It isn't until you get to the higher levels where, oh, to do this, I need food and something, um, which means you might want to uh, pay attention. So, um, if I'm not going to do technology, which really runs off of money more than anything else, what the heck? I'll spend money as my could spend any resource I want to go scouting. And what do I get? I get two more tiles. All righty. And so this one, it's a forest and plains, and it gives me another tapestry card if I explore it. And this one is mostly ocean and a little bit of desert and mountain, and it gives me some culture. All right, that was my turn. These turns are, on the surface, very, very simple, quick little things. Uh, you either do your income, or you pick one track, move forward, pay, and do what it says. Some spaces, you get to do an action, and you can pay a little bit extra to do a bonus action. Often, you can just do one action. My turn is over. Um, now, let's move on to my opponent. Like I said, they've got this deck of cards that will advance and evolve as more and more cards get seeded into it. But it's already been set up. And um, on their turn, I draw two cards to see what they're going to do. What are they going to do? Okie dokie. So, um, actually, let me go ahead and bring it closer so you can see it a little bit better. Sorry, folks who, I, who don't care about um, solo play, but I, I do think this is worthwhile for everybody. Let's see. Now, when you put two cards like this together, you only pay attention to what's in the middle. The stuff that's on either side, you could completely ignore. Um, this right here indicates what my blue 
and Gray opponent want to do. And uh, what they want to do is move forward on advancement tracks, just like I did. Now, the blue one with that little, uh, what do you call it, um, checkered flag, that means he wants to move forward. Let's see, actually, I think it says it uh, right here. Yeah, he wants to move forward on whichever track will get him to the end of the track quickest. So, if he had already moved a lot on military, let's say, he'd want to keep moving on military because this is saying, I just want to get to the end of a track as fast as possible. Um, now, at this point, because he hasn't advanced on any track, all of his tracks are equidistant to the end. So that means this doesn't tell me which one he wants to do, which means I gotta come over here and check the tiebreakers. The tiebreaker, he's the blue player, we choose this one, he wants, interestingly, to do a tech action. So, blue is gonna do a tech action. The, uh, the gray, the Shadow Empire, it's called. He has basically a blank. There's no picture of a, of a flag or a building or stuff like that. So that means he could potentially advance on any of the four tracks. How do I know which one? Again, I check the tiebreaker. He's the gray player, so he wants to advance on exploration. Okay, so um, now there's other icons here that have meanings potentially in different circumstances, but this is the main thing. It tells you what blue wants to do and what gray wants to do, randomly chosen by putting two cards together. Okay, so let's go on ahead and do that, shall we? Blue says, I, as I talked about, he's going to advance on uh, technology. Now, the dummy player has no resources. They never have to pay for anything. Although, as they move forward, there are only certain things that they will benefit from. Uh, you know, they can get more, uh, oh, what do you call it? Uh, they, they can roll for science. They can conquer and explore. They can move forward on tracks. They can get a tapestry card. And if they are ever moved to a spot where they are um, supposed to take a tech card, well, they don't care about tech cards. They don't take it. But he just moved to a spot with a tech card. And so that means he is going to wipe out all three of these. Uh, so it kind of replicates another player taking stuff away. So I've missed out on being able to develop the telescope, eyeglasses, or warships. If I had wanted to do one of these, because they would have been a big part of my strategy, and I'll be honest, I was thinking about going for the telescope, because the telescope gives me another explore tile, and eventually gives me points based on how many explore tiles I found. The telescope is gone, uh, because blue took it away, and now three new ones come out. Uh, compass. All right, that's also a nice explore one. And uh, Dynamite, which is good for warring ways, as you might imagine. And the Bakery, okay, which is some points and could potentially get me a nice big building uh, to add to my capital and develop it. So that's what these new ones are out. So that's what Blue did. And now he is racing to be the first to get the cool special buildings. He's also racing to get to the end. Um, and now that he's started working on that, even though a science is officially his favorite as part of setup, he might keep on pushing this. And that's something I bear in mind. It is definitely standard play that once you start working on a path, you really want to push that path forward to get the most out of it. So anyway, that's what he did. And uh, Gray... Let's see, he didn't have a preference, so it said he did exploring. So he's moving forward on exploring. Ah! Oops, I'm sorry. He's moving forward on exploring, which means he's racing me to get up here to navigation and get the um, house, the the uh, the lighthouse. Now, the blue character, he always does stuff. He resets the card. He rolls the die. He um, conquers territory. The gray one, he doesn't do anything. All he does is move forward on tracks and try to snag my ability to get the cool big buildings that are that can be such a huge part of success in the game. So, he is trying to race me, and that's it. That was it um, for the dummy player. Uh, basically, you draw two cards, see what blue wants to do, see what gray wants to do, and now it is my turn again. Okay, let's move on. And... Hmm... Okay, so I'm still planning on getting technology for free by uh, passing before they two because I can be a technocrat. So I'm not going to chase after technology. I, I, I don't want to miss out on this lighthouse. I, I, I've got some competition for it, so I am going to do exploration again. And now, before, I scouted, which means I got a couple tiles. Now I get to put one of these tiles into play, and I get the benefit of that tile. And if I want, I can spend an extra resource and get another tapestry card. So maybe uh, a tech, uh, a technocracy... Oh, that is a weird word to say. Techno maybe technocracy is not in my future. Because if I pay a resource, I can get another tapestry, and maybe my future will be something completely different than what I was originally thinking. Okay, so... um. 
Okay, but first of all, I am definitely going to explore. Then I got to decide if I'm going to pay extra to get that bonus. So if I explore here, I get some culture. If I explore here, I get another tapestry card. If I explore here, I get one of these tech cards. Hmm. You know what? Okay, I okay. I want to get. Uh, I I'm still planning on doing this. This is going to give me a free upgrade. Um, and a card to upgrade. I'll get a card and I'll upgrade it. So if I get another card and upgrade it, I'll have two tech upgrades before I've left the Stone Age. That could be a really big leg up for me. So, considering that this is in my future, let's go on ahead and um, place... Which one was it? Oh, this one. The one that'll give me a tech tile. I'm holding onto these. I might explore them later. And now, I have to put it somewhere on the board adjacent to one of my existing controlled areas. Beginning of the game, the only thing I control is my capital area right here. So I can put this here, here, or here. And my inclination is to put it over here because it will create a bridge that I could then follow to get to the center of the world. Where the first player to conquer the center tile gets 10 points. This is one of three objectives that are always available in every game. First, um, first player to conquer the Middle Island, 10 points. Second player to do it, 5. First player to complete any adv in, um, advancement track, any of the four tracks, 10 points. Second player, 5. First player to topple two of your opponents, um, although you can never topple their capital. So, you know, if, if my opponent moved out here and then I move in and topple him, if I can do that twice, 10 points and uh, 5 points for doing a second. Now, if I were to flip this whole board over, it's for higher player counts. This is the, uh, I believe, the 1 to 3 player side. Four or more players play on the other side with a bigger world and there are 15 points. There's a first, second, and third place. So, I kind of, uh, I want to expand in this direction. Because, hey, it gets me to the center where there's a 10-point bonus. But you'll notice, this is water, mountains, and forest. And whenever I put a tile down, I want wherever... I can put them wherever I want, as long as it's next to one of my things. But I want to put them next to spaces that match. Because I get points if they match. Uh, um, and unfortunately, where I started out in the world, there are no mountains at all. But there is a forest over here. So if I don't go this way, but instead I go this way... Something like this. Yes, so this might be the better way to go. Because um, I look at each of the sides that are touching existing stuff, and if they match, I get a point. This water matches this water. I get a point. This forest matches this forest. I get a point. Unfortunately, this mountain does not match this plains, so I don't get a point. So I would get two victory points for placing it here. Um, plus, I would get a tech card. If instead I try to put it over here, let's see, I could... Actually, you know what? With this water on the corner like this, um, you know, even though the forest doesn't match this desert, even though the forest doesn't match this water over here, water and water, I could still get two points because this water is on the corner like that. So, okay, I am going to go this way. I would love to put this in a way that I could get more points by matching the four, but still, this is only two points because there's no uh, grassland. I mean, this means I might, instead of this, if I wanted to get more points, I'd do something like this because uh, look at this. Water matching, water matching, water matching, water matching. I get four points for placing this in this spot by matching more often than not. I mean, heck, I could even uh, put this desert next to desert. Match, 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 match. So still, four points, because I'm matching everything. So I'd get four points, I'd get some culture, and I'd get closer to the center, but I'm not after points. I'm after tech right now. I want to get this, instead of getting this culture bonus, I want to get this tech bonus. That's what's more important to me, getting that technology card there. So, let's go with the plan. We'll just go like this. And um, now, I get a tech card and I get one, two points because two sides match. They only have to half match. Um, and that's it. So, hooray, I'm on the board. Two points and I get my first tech. The bakery, the compass, or a dynamite. I think, I think I will take, hmm, they're all good. So the dynamite um, will give me an opportunity to conquer terrain, which is good, because I do want to get here and conquer. This one will give me an opportunity fairly quickly to get more explore tiles. This one will just give me four points. I think right now I want to conquer because we're in a race. He might start trying to race for here, and if I get here first, I get 10 points instead of five. So we're going to learn the uh, technology of a dynamite! Um, although, yeah, and I think that's going to be fine. 
There's more to this decision. I'm just kind of, but we'll, we'll talk more about it when we get into upgrading because whenever you get a new tech, it comes down here in the useless. We have not developed dynamite in our early uh, prehistory days. We have just started working on it. And again, this is another example of the history of this world being very different. It took a long time for humanity to develop gunpowder. In my world, we're going to develop gunpowder or some equivalent of it much, much earlier. But we're working on it right now. Uh, when I do my next income, it'll move up and then I'll get to do a free conquer with my newly invented dynamite. Dynamite! Okay, so that was um, my second action. I didn't explore, and a whole bunch of stuff happened there. I got some points, I got some stuff, and remember, if I want, I can spend a resource and get another tapestry. Since I'm in a hurry, I want to pass early to use uh, my technocracy to most effect. I'll go on ahead and spend a resource and give myself another tapestry card. Academia. Okay. Which is an alternative. Instead of becoming technocrats, we can become academics when I move into my second era, which is whenever I invent technology or gain tapestries, get points. And now this is interesting. This is for the entire second era of the game, which could last quite a while. My technocracy is only once. When I first play it, I get a one-time bonus as opposed to an ongoing bonus. So one of these two is going to be the first tapestry card I play, which will tell the ongoing story of my society. We were born in Containers. We started out making fire, and then we moved on, when I play one of these cards, to either become academics or technocrats. All right. But again, that's in the future. So that was my second turn. And as you can see, if I could go two more times, I could actually get my uh, lighthouse going. But I don't think I'm going to be able to pull that off, because I'm burning through resources pretty much as fast as I can. All right, my turn. Uh, time for the dummies. And, okay, we got two cards, and let's look at them again just so you can see one more time how it works. In this case, neither of them have a preferred preference. The icons that can appear here are, like you saw, that flag, which like, like this flag, which means, get me to the end of a track, or get me to the next building I can grab. But if they're blank, the blue and the S for shadow, this is the Otama, this is the Shadow Empire, they um, are both going to rely on the tiebreaker. Blue is going to move forward on science, and the, um, the Shadow is going to move on his favorite. You can see that little heart. So Shadow wants to move on his favorite, which was set as part, randomly as part of setup. So this is what they are going to do. Alrighty, so you get to see some more stuff. Blue always goes first. Blue says, science! And um, Blue always gets to roll the science die. Whenever somebody triggers a science action, which is here, 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 and then a bunch there at the end. You roll the science die, which is a d12, 12-sided die, and e there are three of each of the four advancements. So, um, science always leads to a breakthrough. Let's see what the Otama gets. He moves forward on exploration. Okay, everybody's racing on exploration now. But he doesn't get any benefits from this. You'll notice it says roll the die, and there's an X right there. The X means move forward for free, although the Otamas never pay anyway. But if I did science and I rolled this, I would get to move forward for free and not have to pay. But because of the X, I don't get the benefit of what I moved into. So anyway, so he did science. He's moved up. There's a three-way race to get this lighthouse. And uh, Gray said, I want to do my favorite. Gray's favorite is technology. So there's a race on technology and exploration. Um, and a little bit of science. Nobody's done any warfare yet. Okay, uh, that was it for them. Again, the Otamas turns are super easy, but they do create very compelling ex uh, uh, examples, especially once they start conquering and moving out and um, you know competing there. All right, my turn again. I've got two more resources, which effectively means I could take two more turns. Now, how many more turns is he going to take? I know he's going to take at least one more turn before he does income. He'll do this one, and he might play this one, or he might not. So I've got a little bit more time, because if I do... If I, all right, so I'm going to go... I'll eat my food, and... You know what? I would like to increase my income. I'm just going to triple down on exploration. I spent a food, because remember, it could be anything, and now we've uh, gone from scouting to rafts to wagons. We are exploring this world, and I have a choice. I can either do another explore tile, like you saw me do before, which will give me more points and resources, or I can build my first um, farm. Is that right? Yes, these are farms, which means it'll occupy space on my capital, which will help me out, and it will increase my income. Now, when I do my income phase, I'm going to get two food instead of one. I think that's what I'm going to do. As much as I'd like to explore, because, hey, it would give me um, another tap. I'm fine with that. I am going to build my first farm, 
uh, as it says right there. Doesn't cost anything. I mean, you know, it costs the resource to move up, but that's it. And I can put this anywhere. Well, not exactly anywhere. You will notice in my wetlands that there are all the, you know, we got, we, we're flooded. We're basically um, Amsterdam. Uh, and uh, right now, we can't build where all these bits of water are, so I have to build on an empty space. And which space will I build on? There is actually a fair bit of thought that goes into that as well, because there's two benefits for building up. One is, if you complete any one of these quadrants, you can see that it's a three by three, there's a quadrant, 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 quadrant. If you fill up any of them, you immediately get a resource of your choosing. And that may not sound like much, but uh, especially at the beginning of the game, uh, one resource is basically like getting to take an extra turn, because you only cost one resource to do any of these actions. So even a single resource is huge. So I want to fill up as fast as I can to get a free resource. But there's the other thing as well. If I can completely fill any row or any column, that means um, that row or column will start generating victory points for my civilization. So I could go for the row and column filling, or I could go for the getting resources, or I could go for both. This little thing over here only needs one, two, three. I'm just going to put my um, farm there. Now if I can just fill these two other spaces in, I will get a free resource in that area. So we'll go with that. Okay. That was my turn, and um, I've still got one more resource, but now it is the dummy player's turn. Bippity bop. And Blue says, hey, I'll do anything, and Blue is choosing military. Gray says, I want to get to the next closest building possible. Um, right, let's see. And that means he could get to this one in one, two, three, or he could get to this one in one, two, three. So he's got a tie. He could either get to the forge or the lighthouse. How do we break the tie? Again, he we pay attention to the tiebreaker, uh, and in this case, it is tech. So he's going to move up on tech, and he never does anything. He's just moving up trying to snag those buildings for me. So he's really easy, but blue is a bit more complex. Blue is the first one to try to conquer territory. Uh, they're uh, boldly going out, which is interesting because, remember, blue randomly uh, chose science. Blue are literally scientists. That's kind of their thing. But, um, you know, they're bucking tradition, and they are going to be the first to conquer. As you see, they moved up, and this says conquer. All right, I, I, it would have been good if I tried to conquer something first, so you see how a regular player does it, but they're for the most part, they're the same. Now, for me to conquer, for a player to conquer, I have to be able to move into a zone that exists. So I could conquer this place that I just moved in, so I could get closer to the center, um, or I could, but I can't conquer over here because this area hasn't been explored. The dummy player gets a big leg up in that he can move right into an area that's unexplored, and he will get a freebie explorer. It's like he explore plus conquers. And which way is he going to go? Well, we have a little cheat sheet for him over... Which one is it? It's over here. Um, if he can, he would want to conquer one of my zones. That would always be his first gen, in which case he would do a hostile conquer. But he's a long ways away from me, so that means he can't conquer any of my zones, so he's going to do a neutral conquer. Let's move this over here a little bit. And so, first of all, we have to check what valid hexes can he conquer into. Um, it has to be someplace that can be conquerable or explorable. That These are conquerable, these are explorable, so these are the only places he could expand into. Now, he will only expand into a space adjacent to me if he um, has that little topple icon. And right now, he does not. So that means he's a little bit more timid. Um, or you know, he, 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 he's, he doesn't get quite as strong a grasp. So it's gonna be kind of a weak expansion, because you can see down here on the bottom step, it says, if there was that topple icon on his card, which there isn't, then he would get to place two tokens on the space he was going instead of one. As is, he's only going to space one. So now he has to... All right, these are all the valid places. The tiebreaker. Number one, can he get to the middle island? Is there still a middle island achievement available? Yes, there is. Nobody's gotten to the first or second place. So that is what he is after, which means we don't have to go to the second, third, or fourth tiebreaker, uh, which includes the hex here. He's going to come into this area because he's racing me. And he'll be one step ahead, because I got to explore and then conquer. He just gets to do them both for one. So, how does he do it? Well, he doesn't care about points, any of that stuff. He just takes a random tile and puts it down randomly. And then just moves his guy in there. It says there at the bottom, his action. If an empty hex, draw and place a random tile. Place your um, outpost. And place a toppled Shadow Empire outpost if the topple icon were here. Now, the reason he would do that is because no zone can ever have more than two outposts. This uh, two outposts means it can never be conquered again. But since he didn't do that because it didn't say to, this is a place that I could move in and I could conquer him. 
I could topple his thing and I could potentially cut off his expansion and all that. So that was it. Super simple. Mine is a little bit more complicated, as you might imagine. It says, hey, hey, I wanted to advance. I moved up here. And if he advances again, he's going to get the 10 points before I can get there. And meanwhile, uh, the shadow, he just moved closer to getting the forge. And so that was it for him. Okay. Back to me. And I could take one more turn. I've got one more resource. I could use that. Well, I cannot use it to navigate anymore because now to go to the next level, I need food and something else. All I've got is population. So I can't do that. But hey... I could try to conquer and I could race him because I could get here and then, you know, it's anybody's guess who will get there first because we'll be neck and neck and we'll see if he actually tries to make that last move. But here's the thing. Remember, I want my technocracy. I want to pass before them. And there is a 50-50 chance when he has only two cards left, he will either play these cards to do another action or he will pass early. So I, I can't look at these cards. I don't, And this is a problem you would have in regular play because there are big advantages to passing early. Right now, I get an advantage because of my technocracy I'm planning to learn, but there are also regular advantages as well. So I want to pass before him. But I want to take this last action and move in here so that I have a better shot at getting the 10 points instead of 5 points. Plus, if he moves in here, he might actually... Oh, no, that's right. He can never topple here, so I can always still get in. That's a special rule. All right. Am I going to pass... Yes, I am. I don't want to take the chance. And if he then takes a whole nother turn, I'll regret it because that probably means I'm giving him first dibs on that. Say, la vie, I am going to. So far, you've been seeing me do act advanced turns. Now I'm going to do income. And unlike the first income where all I did was step four, now I'm doing steps one, two, three, and four. And so this is where my um, society grows and expands and evolves. Remember, the steps are first... Uh, actually activate the entertainer ability. And like I said, depending on who you are, there are radically different abilities we get. But I start out over here, and I've got to decide, am I going to give myself an extra population, culture, food, or money? That decision, if I take money, that means the next time we advance, I can either build a, uh, oh, what's it, an armory? or a uh, house for free. And if I choose house, then after that, I can either get a free tech or I can do a free explore. So I, this choice is really setting me on a path for the game. Um, and since I'm doing a lot of exploring, which means I need more food, I'm going to get more food over here, but if I want more food, what the heck, let's double down on our explorating ways. I will do this and immediately get one food. The more food I have, the more I can explore because that's uh, food is the main engine for exploring. Culture is the main engine for military. And, um, oh, what is it? Population, it leads to scientific breakthroughs and money leads to technology breakthroughs. All right, so I did my first step. And again, other players might have, would have done, had a very, very different effect to have depending on whether they're militant or mystics or architects or heralds or leaders or nomads or craftsmen or historians or merrymakers etc etc uh very very different play depending on who you are so i've done my first thing which in my case was hey i just got a little nice extra resource hooray um and i've set myself on a path next up i expand the tapestry of my personal history which means I've now got to choose. Are we going to become academics or technocrats? I think you know it's going to be technocrats. It's what I've been planning the whole time. It's why I passed early. So I'll hold on to academia. This might be our next evolution of our society. But for now, I'm going to be technocrats. And it says, when played, if I am the first player to enter the era, I am... Um, oh, by the way, as, <laughs> there should always be three techs. As soon as I took that tech, another one should have come out. Assembly lines. Okay. Because I'm the first, I get to grab one of these techs and advance it for free. Nice. So, if I go for the bakery, I'll immediately get four points. If I go for the assembly line, um, well, I don't want this one because this says I will immediately activate a completed technology. Right now, I have no complete technology, so assembly line is not it. So, it's either bakery or compass. This will immediately give me two more tiles for more exploring. Hmm. All right. Um... Yeah, so, 
The other thing, I mean, there's the immediate benefit, four points or two exploration, and then there's the more long-term benefit. When I go from medium to fully developed technology, this one is a free explore action, which is like a whole nother turn, basically. This one is build the bakery, which is this charming, adorable little building here. Look at this thing. Look at these things. They are so nice. Um, sorry, it's a little dark, but the detail is exquisite. And um, so I can put this and I could use this to start filling up more spaces of my capital uh, so I can get closer to, um, you know, making completed rows and columns and close. I mean, this is interesting. Uh, when you take these, you don't have to put them, you, you can't put them on the orange dots. You have to put them, uh, you know, in, in open spaces, but you are allowed to hang them over the edge. So if I hung this over the edge, I'd only be filling two, but I would have completed this and I'd get another free resource, which is like another turn. So, but that's later on. That would be level of uh, getting the final bakery technology advancement. Four points immediately, bakery later, or two extra explore tiles, and then a free explore. I think I, I'm going to want to build up my capital. I'm going to develop bakeries. Hooray! Okay, so that was the first thing. When I put this in play, grab a tech and upgrade it. So immediately, boom, we have a level two which is one, two, three, four. And now, later on, the next time I do income, the next time we move forward in an era, I would be able to potentially move this up to the top level and get that bakery building to add over here. Um, although there are prerequisites, and that's another reason I chose this. As you can see, the prerequisite to get this up to level three is either me or one of my neighbors to the left or the right, that's what this symbol means, me in the middle or my left or right neighbor has to have developed farming. So that's an interesting element of the game. I don't know, you know, because if I talk about the compass over here, to get to the top level of the compass, either me or one of my neighbors has to get to level two of technology. Now, Gray is working on it. It's Gray's favorite. It's likely he will eventually do level two. So I don't, I could get the benefit of this never having worked my way up the technology track if my neighbor does it. And I know he will. But in the meantime, this one of getting one of us to farming, I've already done it. I'm at farming right now as soon as I did this development. So I know. I, I, mean, I can count on hopefully my opponents will make this available for me, but I know this will be available for me. So that's another reason to go for that one. So uh, I moved it up. I got my four points. Another tech came out. Okay. And when you place your tapestry card, if you are the first one to do it, let me go zoom in over there so you can see it. You know, we started out as a maker of fire. And when I became technocrats, since I was the first one, see, I'm bigger than my neighbors, I'm the first one, I get a free resource of my choosing. Boom! So there were two reasons for me to try to pass and play as fast as possible. All right, so I get another free resource. And this actually comes over here on my, not the uh, extra one I'm using for close-ups. All righty. So I get another free resource. What do I want? Um... Well, I could just take... I'm going to get two more food during income because um, I need... I mean, to go up three more steps on exploring, I need food and something, food and something, food and something. Then I need food and two things. So if I want to keep pushing this, I just want more food. I mean, literally, it's all I've done so far. Hmm. Yeah, okay. What the heck? I'm just in for food, in for a penny, in for a pound of food. So that's what I got for that. So that was the tapestry. The... History of my world, Masters of Fire became, you know, that, that Mastery of Fire turned us into technocrats uh, of, of the ancient world. And now I uh, move on to the next step where I get to do an upgrade right now. Um, and here's the crazy thing, folks. I could upgrade this dynamite so I could get a free attack. But since I already have mastered farming, I can upgrade this and boom, just like that, get this all the way to the top uh, in record time. Um, so that is pretty cool. I would not have been able to do that if it weren't for technocracy. You wouldn't see a level three until the third era most of the time, but my technocracy allowed me to push this up super fast, and that means I immediately get to expand my capital. And if I do this, I'm wasting half of it because it hangs over the edge, but I'm immediately getting another resource. But it might make more sense to go like this. Because this is now, now I just need to fill one, two more spaces to get points out of this um, column. One, two, three, four spaces to get points out of that one. So I'm going to put it over here and start trying to fill in. And I'll get a couple more little buildings and fill in this space. Okay, so boom, uh, that farming paid off. We are now the, uh, our, our technology is all about baking as we explore the world. Okay, so... That was a free upgrade. You always get an upgrade if you've got tech. Nothing's more painful than to get to a, a uh, you know a, one of these moments and then not have tech to be able to not upgrade. So 
Now I score points. And the points are, again, taken from here. Uh, no points over here. But if I had built some more armories, I would get points for every location on the board I've conquered. If I had built some more farms, I would get four points. And then more points as I get higher. I think, what's the other one? Ten points. So if I just really focus on farms, I could start getting lots of points as part of my income. Now, unfortunately, I haven't uncovered any of those, but I do, as a start, I get one point for every tech I've got. That's two more points for me. Now, again, if I had made more markets, you could see, I could get two points for every tech I've got. So, uh, you know, there's all kinds of ways to focus on things and really start um, harvesting tons of points as the game goes on, as, as it escalates. Uh, also, over here, I get one point per row or column. I have no rows or columns completed, so I don't get anything there. So, I did my upgrade, I've got my points, and now the last thing I do is, I do my up, uh, my um, my income, just like you saw at the beginning. I get one money, one population, one culture, and another tapestry card, which is, ah, militarism. That might change my future if this is something I decide to branch out into uh, being a bit more uh, what, jingoistic. All right. Um, and I get one, two food and another explore tile. So we have, uh, we're just, uh, all right, uh, which is uh, another way to get food over here. Okay. Boom. That's why I wanted to go first. I took advantage of the technocracy. It is now the dummy player's turn. And let's see if he would have gone. I had more time. If I looked here and there was a little picture of the income icon here, it's, it, that would be, he would say, hey, you know what? I am going to pass. I'm not going to play these cards. I'm going to do my income. But there's not. And so instead, he is going to play these last cards. And then next turn, he's going to do income. And in the meantime, uh, he's just doing uh, whatever. He's doing military. And boom, he made it to the center. He um, beat me. That's 10 points that will not be coming my way. Oops, and I forgot to uh, get out his... Um, I, I need to get out his cubes to cover it up because he is conquered. I can still get five points for getting there. Oh, and here's another interesting thing. He's doing a military. He spread into there. And you see the little topple icon? Normally that would mean a toppled shadow empire would be there too, which means I couldn't move in ever. But that, like I said before, that never happens in the center. So I can still get in here for five points. And the interesting thing is, because he's here first, I could topple him. And that would be maybe my, one of my first two topples to topple two opponents. So, another thing, pushing me more towards military. Moving in here, toppling him and toppling him to get this victory. And you know what? He might be moving against me, so maybe I should move against him first. Isn't that always the way? All right, so, he just did a military action. Took that from me. I'll, um, I'll, I'll put a cube on there in a minute to mark it. And Gray says, hey, do whatever. And he says, exploration. So, Gray is moving up to try to catch me with exploration. So, that's it for them. So on his next turn, because there's nothing for him to draw, he will do his income phase, uh, which is a bit different than mine, but it's still the same end result. He scores some points. He uh, does various and sundry things. And folks, you know what? What am I at now? Oh my gosh, almost 50 minutes. I've just gotten started building my tapestry, folks. If you would like to watch a bit more, if you'd like to maybe, maybe I'll go military so you can see some of that uh, back and forth. You can hit that eye in the top right corner screen and go to the extended playthrough. Or instead, you can go straight to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.